My name is Ilan Rubach. I am a professor of ethics and computational technologies at Carnegie Mellon University, uh, and I'm also director of the Create Lab. I think the advisory board RoboGlobal has is outstanding because what you're doing is you're cutting across industry and university expertise. So you have membership of folks who understand the entrepreneurial experience and folks who understand not just what's been invented today, but what's going to be invented in the near term, the next decade or two. Hi, I'm Manish Katari. I'm the president of SRI Ventures. We do everything from biosciences to robotics to artificial intelligence uh, to education. As a techno-realist, this world is transforming. You don't need to be a futurist. And the robo team is doing exactly that. And that's part of what uh, excites me about being part of the team. Hi, I'm Henry Christensen. I'm uh, one of the co-founders of RoboGlobal. Uh, and my normal daytime job is to be a professor at UC San Diego. We're still sort of at the infancy of robotics. Even though robotics has sort of been around for 50 years, I would say the first 45 years was dominated by mechanical systems, sort of robots that were very good at doing repeatable motion, but they were unintelligent. The next generation of robotic systems we're going to see are robot systems that are much more intelligent. But robotics and automation is not just about communication. It is about all of that, plus. Because it's also about how we move and how we configure the world. It's about how we produce energy. It's about how we move from place to place. And that uh, pervasion of every aspect of the logistics of life, that's not really something we've seen before with technology. I think there are many other examples we could go into, like the work we've done with space and the ability to use AI to do debris management and improve uh, the atmosphere out there. Robotics is, is about empowering people. It's about enabling people to do things they couldn't do otherwise. If you have sort of a handicap, we can use robots to compensate for this. We can do medical surgery that would be very difficult for a surgeon to do without robotics. Orthopedics is something that actually is well suited for converting to robotic surgery because most of its structures are fairly rigid, they're predictable, and there's a lot of fairly subtle tasks that are involved there. Where you place a screw in a spine has, has a huge impact on the outcomes of the patient. But it's also enabling people to stay longer in the workplace, helping people to stay in their homes for an extended period of time, and it's about going places like sending robots to Mars. The trick is, you want the people with the most influence to have the best information. Because with the best information, they can make the most rational decisions that will make the world the best place it can be. So what I want is a coherent message out of RoboGlobal that tells the right story, so the right kind of investments happen. And this is something that, once developed, is not going to be inordinately expensive. So it's not going to be the purview of only the top 1% of the world. This is actually going to transfer and have an impact on everybody's life throughout the world. And that really excites and inspires me. So from my point of view, robotics, we have not yet penetrated the first 10%. So there's 90% to go before we have fully utilized the potential of robotics. So that's why now is the right time to go after this.